the community bike 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 it's me for me you know not because of the place on the leaderboard is that what you think you think i'm for sure an underdog again doesn't matter yo the other day i made a video on miss danny spiegel and a lot of you guys saw that thing and some of you guys stopped at the title and the thumbnail and here is my freaking monthly reminder that the reason for a title and a thumbnail is that you click on it so that you watch the thing and it seems as if a lot of people who have anything negative to say about that video did not watch it but they stopped at the freaking title which is danny spiegel hates crossfit if you really sit there and you remove the fact that you think that she's a woman and i am a woman hater which i am not and i'm going to prove to you by doing something similar right here with Mr. Justin Medeiros, all you're going to see is that I say, she says this here, and then she says this here. I don't know how you can have it both ways. I don't know how it is that you can quit on running events, consistently talk down upon running events, and then have your say about how running isn't CrossFit. You can't have your freaking cake and eat it too. Or maybe you can, because the girls who eat is your brand. Maybe that's the way it works. I just don't get it. But this entire thing is going to be about Justin Medeiros, and I thought that it was only fair to do something on this about a guy in the sport, because of the way that people think that that's negative towards women. Of course, I'm talking about the video that he put up on his channel where it's him and it's Ellie I'm talking about their experience from this past CrossFit Games And I do not think that it was the best idea to put that video up I'm gonna tell you why and we're gonna start with a good message from our friend Colton Mertens. Let's listen to that All right, brother. Thank you. You're the best. Uh, talk to you soon Thank um, you. And you've climbed just so you know, you've climbed in the ranks of becoming one of the best people to podcast with you. No, I've, I've been trying to get better um, There's one other thing that I do want to talk about Please. Uh, quick, Please. if I can. Um, so yeah, you guys saw the the Buttery Bros clip after the ski event. So he, he asked me, and he said, you definitely didn't have an advantage on the ski, but you had an advantage on the squats. And um, I said, you know, like being 30 pounds lighter than some of these guys, I don't know if I really do when it comes to mo moving an external load. You know, because like we have every other strength sport on earth. There's weight classes in powerlifting, Olympic lifting, strongman. And it's not because the little guys are outlifting the big guys. There's no other small guys that lift like I lift in this sport. There's no other small guys that did well on that event like I did. So I just want to like say like maybe um like if you are 215 pounds and I'm 182 pounds and I can lift more than you, maybe you need to start lifting some more. I don't know. He did ask me something after that that kind of pissed me off. I, I thought I gave him enough good content for one. I said something kind of boring, whatever. But um, what I wanted to say is he asked me, like I work on a farm during the day. And um, he goes, do you move stuff around a lot? I'm like, yeah, like pretty much all day. Like I'm doing manual labor on a farm. And he goes, uh, is that an advantage for you when you're you're doing a lot odd object stuff like a sandbag? I don't remember what I said, but it was, I wanted to say like, yeah, um, you know, waking up before the sun and going to a pig farm and working all day and then coming home to train in my father's garage by myself is a very big advantage against uh, these guys that are just <laughs> training, recovering, training, recovering. We got this whole thing from Colton right here. He's gotten fed up. Hey, do you think it's an advantage that you're short? Hey, do you think it's an advantage that you work on a pig farm and maybe it helped you move that sandbag? Is that what you think? You think? You think you move that sandbag because your legs are this long and you can cycle that thing faster? It goes, no, dude, I'm 182 pounds. Don't you think it would be easier when you think of the weightlifting sport there's always weightlifting classes, right? And there's a 198 pound class. There's a 182 pound class for the men. Whatever that converts to over in kilos. I'm not sure, like 95 kilos and 87 kilos, the two different weight classes. Usually, if not always, this weight class is going to exceed this weight class's numbers because the stronger you are, the better you can move an outside load. Colton Mertens comes into the CrossFit Games at 182 pounds down here and he's beating people up at the top like the Brent Fikowskis and the freaking Yellow Hostes and the Roman Krennikovs, the big dudes. And everyone's gonna say it's because he's short, but because he's short, he's also a buck 82 and that 200 pound sandbag outweighs him by 20 pounds where it's also 20 pounds less than everybody else. He's giving you the shut up and just understand that I am a good freaking athlete. I deserve to be here. And now I'm going to play a little bit of Justin Medeiros for you. The things and opportunities that I have are because of me and who I am as a person rather than that finish on the leaderboard. See, I heard that, and all I can think about is what do the other champions have? Tia, for Rich, freaking Fraser. Yes, yes, yes. People like that Fraser is a hardcore, sits in his freaking parents' basement, dedicates his whole life, doesn't touch a kitchen knife because he's so dedicated to his craft. Tia is this immovable object who has become overly aggressive to the point where she kicks butt. And I know I've given her crap for being aggressive for other reasons in the past, but in this circumstance, it's far better than the way that Justin presents himself. 
himself in this video. And then we've got Froning, who is the homebody from Cookfield, Tennessee, who's got all of his buddies around and just likes to work out all day. People like the features of these individuals, but the only reason that they are who they are in the eyes of the community is because they have all of those titles. It's those things that help them win those titles. Justin says here that it has nothing to do with his placement on the podium and that everyone just likes him for who he is. And you see it after he wins the inverted melody workout. He's being interviewed. He went from basically dead last after the first two events to moving up the leaderboard and everyone's getting on board. They want him to make a comeback because they like Justin and they do, but they like him as the champ. And the storyline was that the champ is going to start making his way up the leaderboard and everyone wanted that to happen. And it would have been an incredible story had it had happened the same way Froning comes back in 2014. The same way Fraser has that sandbag fall out and I think it was 2019. And then Noah Olson's pushing him in that year where there's the top 10. Tia Toomey's entire story for the next year is that she had a baby and that she's going to be trying to make her way back to the top of the podium this year. Every single one of those stories I just told you have to do with the top of the podium. So while yes, people like Justin Medeiros, they like him a lot. I like him a lot. I like, 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 they like him a lot. Like, 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 to make, like, want to, like, 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 was just like, unlike me. But don't get this messed up thinking that people would have no idea who you were or like you as much as you do if it weren't for the things that you do, which is your craft, which is winning the CrossFit games. Patrick Vellner is the freaking dude who always finishes in second and third, and people love him for that too. The goal of any offseason, at least for me, is just to give the, my brain <laughs> a break, you know? I remember finding them like, oh shoot, I'm like, hey, I never got my chip timer. I got it on. I was like, it's on your ankle. And I was like, I remember sitting there and I was like, when did that get put on? I did not remember it at all. And in that time, like the adrenaline starts to pump. I started to feel better. I'm like, you know what? Like maybe I can freaking crush this workout. And then that happened and I'm like, uh, maybe I'm not still in like the most recovered like best headspace. This part about him recovering his brain and becoming healthy over the course of the off season is something that in this video, he says that he was good to go after the bike ride. There were speculations that he had some sort of a concussion after that. I think I heard that on Talking Elite Fitness. And in this video where he's debriefing from his own mouth, he says that there was no issue as far as his head was concerned after the bike race. He does talk a little bit about it. I think that I played about how his legs blow up. But he says as far as the collision with Lazar Duchitz goes, he has no ill will against him. It is the freaking competition. That's the way it goes. But he also says that his head is okay. But then he follows it up with this thing. And oh shoot, McKay, I never got my chip timer i got like, my head on I was like it's on your ankle and i was like i remember sitting there and i was like when did that get put on i did not remember it to me that sounds like a concussion protocol issue and over the course of the entire rest of the video the dude's talking about becoming healthier and he doesn't say exactly what it is and if you ask me there's something that they're not talking about maybe he has a freaking concussion i don't know why they wouldn't talk about it but the only time that i had a concussion ever i was in wrestling i dropped on my head and then i just don't remember the beginning of the season at all it's very eerie that he talks about not remembering them putting that ankle bracelet timer on him and then he also states that there's nothing wrong with him after that first event. He was just exhausted, like a lot of the athletes were, but he also fell on his head, which none of the other athletes did. If you ask me, there's something to that, but I'm just saying. I think for some reason, I still haven't been able to put like my finger on why, but I definitely felt a lot more pressure than I have any other year. This last season has been pretty challenging. Um... I can't put my finger on exactly why, but I think every year comes with more expectations. I'm pretty sure that this is the last time that I'm going to play Ellie Turner in this video. And at the end of this, they talk about how they're going to be doing a vlog. It's the channel, nature of it. People come here to watch Justin and Ellie. I get it. But in this one, people want to figure out what happened to Justin. And right there, I think that whoever edited it thought that it was a good idea to put these statements back to back. But to me, it really tries to undercut Justin Medeiros, who in my opinion is one of the top 10, if not one of the top five fittest individuals to ever walk the face of the planet. He doesn't understand why this happened. He can't put his finger on it. And then she says the exact same thing. I can't quite put my finger on why. Still haven't been able to put like my finger on why. I can't put my finger on exactly why, but it's like a one upper sort of situation. They didn't do it on purpose. Whoever edited it and put it together did this. There's expectations, of course, for Justin Medeiros to go and finish at least on the podium, if not to win as their consecutive CrossFit games. I understand that pressure. Everybody saw that. He talks about it plenty in here. What were the expectations for Ellie Turner? I'll wait. Like, this isn't me trying to be a dick. This is just me saying that she got cut her first year at the CrossFit Games. She was right around 20th in her second year of the CrossFit Games. She had to withdraw, unfortunately, due to a back injury this year, and that sucks. And maybe her expectation was to finish in the teens, 
I don't know what her personal expectations were, but they don't throw a stone at the expectations of a Justin Medeiros. And there's just like a weird back and forth here that I think is undermining the prestige of a Justin Medeiros. Competed at Rogue and that was kind of the main off season competition. And after that was just kind of rebuilding for the next year and like, definitely get you feel pretty unfit in the off season. I never liked it when the CrossFit Games champions say this stuff. He wins the Rogue Invitational where he takes it over Ron McCrenikoff. He takes it over Jeffrey Adler. He takes it over Patrick Vellner. And then he says that he gets pretty unfit from the point in which he won that up until the point in which the Open starts. Mentions some sort of a snatch workout where he's doing his burpees in sets of five. Who in God's green earth thinks that it's that good of an idea to get that out of shape in the off season? That in and of itself is going to be weighing on you. Maybe when you don't perform so well at a semifinal, you're gonna be thinking, oh my god, maybe I did get too out of shape in the offseason. There's other things that he's about to talk about in this video that are gonna be thinking, oh my god, I shouldn't have gotten that out of shape in the offseason. What'd you do? Take off the entire month of November and December and eat freaking Christmas cookies and Thanksgiving dinners? Kind of going into the open, obviously didn't do as well in the open as I did the previous year, but wasn't like any reason for concern, like the open is the open. It's only three workouts, I mean. There you go again with the open not mattering. I hate, hate, hate. There's the word hate, the one that I didn't use in the Danny Spiegel video. There it is three times. I hate that the CrossFit Open doesn't matter because people like Justin Medeiros can now say that, oh, it's only three workouts. Maybe one of them was in my wheelhouse. If I don't have a good finish, whatever. <laughs> doesn't mean anything, but it could have been the first data point to say, oh my god, I'm not on track compared to years previous. But no, it don't matter. He made it to the quarterfinals. Leading into quarterfinals, like, my goal is, like, to make a statement, you know? Like, wanted to make, like, let everyone know, like, hey, like, just because I didn't have a good open finish doesn't mean that I'm not fit. And I think I had that at quarterfinals. I mean, ding, 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 ding. That's the first thing where you can start to see something going wrong with Justin Medeiros' season. He wins Rogue, fly it high, good job. He has, he has lost a live competition, however many consecutive. And then he starts to feel really out of shape. He ate like 48,000 Christmas cookies. Didn't work out, does five burpees, gets winded. Then it's sitting in his head. It's like really deeply ingrained in there. He doesn't finish too well in the open. He kind of thinks that it's because the open doesn't matter, but there is those Christmas cookies and those burpees weighing on his soul. I'm gonna prove it to everybody that the quarterfinals are, this is where I'm gonna shine. He wins two workouts, but did he pay the price for doing that a little bit too early? It's the scene in the Fast and the Furious. Too soon, Junior. <laughs> too soon, Junior. Oh! And semifinals kind of came and didn't really have the performance that we expected, which was weird because we felt like training's been going so well. I don't think it was any reason of alarm in like our group. See, this is weird. So we have getting out of shape with the burpees. We have the open not going so well. We have us wanting to perform well at the quarterfinals. And then we have an underperformance at the semifinals, which apparently means nothing. What did you say? where the quarterfinals meant something. And in my head, it's a huge reason for alarm because if you've listened to any of the analysts in the space, they'll say that the best thing that Mr. Medeiros has going for him is his consistency. If there are events that don't go well for you for some reason or another, it should be cause for alarm. No reps be damned. You don't get those things. Why is it? Because of what you are. You are Mr. Consistency. We had some hiccups along the way that, with just like health-wise, that made me nervous, I think, going into the game. This is one of those reasons you don't make this video, Justin. You're not going to say what the health issues are. At the end of the video, you plug GoWad, which I hope and I really hope isn't just some sort of a shameless plug for a sponsor, which it may be, but I'm hoping that you're actually going to do that thing and these health injuries that you're frequently referencing are legitimate. I have no reason to believe that they're not, but it's weird that you keep on bringing them up if you're not going to say what they are, because when you bring them up, it's like you're throwing blood into the water and the sharks are swimming. And somewhere out there, Ricky Garrard is watching this thing and Ricky Garrard's thing Thinking, oh my god, he's got something going out of them. <laughs> I'm gonna freaking tear him up. Lining up on the start line, I mean, you just got those nerves again. And I feel like I kind of had that rookie mistake of coming out hot, you know? Like, I felt like I wanted to make a statement this year. And I think I realized about 15 minutes into the workout that, hey, this pace is probably not sustainable. 
and I started to back off just a little bit because I knew there was 25 minutes left. Okay, so we have an underperformance at the semifinals where he just doesn't look like he quite has it the same way. He got in shape for the quarterfinals for no reason whatsoever, but it's because maybe he was out of shape way too much in the offseason. And now we're at the CrossFit Games, and I can tell you this, I sit here a lot. I make these videos, I edit these videos. I'm no Heber and Mars from the Buttery Bros. I'm not up for all hours of the night during the CrossFit Games getting out some feature-length documentary that ever everyone's going to say is amazing, but I also no longer work out four or five hours a day like I used to. And I'm also nowhere near and have never been to the level of a Justin Medeiros. I can't even throw a stone at him, but I do know what it's like not having the capabilities that you're used to having. And it shows up in longer workouts like that. I did a workout with JR not too long ago, and it's just the freaking 12 to 18 minute realm in a 25 to 30 minute workout. You hit this wall and you're thinking, where the hell do I go from here? There's two avenues there. One of which I think is under training. You don't have the volume built up or no Number two is you're under fuel. It could be a combination of both for all I know. And of course on this event, the dude also falls on his freaking head, but he didn't bring that up yet. He brings up the fact that his legs felt heavy and he was pushing too hard. He made a rookie mistake, but maybe he was doing exactly what he needed to do to have that consistent placement that we're used to. And he was just under fueled or under trained and he didn't have the physical capabilities to do the things he wanted to do. And it started at the off season with an under training. You jump up, grab the bike. I'm like riding handlebars are a little sideways now. I can hear the tire like rubbing against the frame like there's really something to that my buddies and i used to do these nighttime bike rides we'd leave at midnight we'd get back at 4 a.m we'd ride up and down the streets and one night a buddy of mine got hit by a car he was fine but bike wasn't fine we had just started the bike ride and we're all like dude don't be a baby we we just started we want to ride bikes the dude was kind of quiet and when we got back he goes that was the hardest bike ride of my life i go yeah you got hit by a car it seems like it'd be pretty tough and he goes no man this tire is pushed up against the frame the entire time it's like i was going uphill for the entire entirety of the bike ride. So if that is true, which I have no reason to believe that it is, it's as if Justin Medeiros got hit by a car. He is my buddy from freaking high school college, and he just had the worst bike ride of his life. And that's how we started off the CrossFit games. And to put the cherry on top, he might be under fueled, not a shape. Obviously, I ended up being fine, just like bruises, a little bit of cut, and my ego hurt. <laughs> the nerves and adrenaline just after that event, man, I was wiped. Right there's the important part because earlier I was referencing, and I wanted to make sure that I got that out in the beginning for those of you who may have turned this thing off. The portion where he doesn't know where his ankle bracelet is going into event three, I believe it was, the handstand event. He's, oh my God, I don't remember them putting this thing on. I'm like, oh, well, maybe he did have a concussion. He never owns up to it. He never personally says it. You hear people talking about it potentially, but right there in that clip just then, he says there was nothing wrong with him. Adrenaline dump and he's wiped out. That's it. That's all he says. Wow. From Justin Medeiros' mouth himself. There was just nothing that I felt like I had. I mean, I was, I'd like get there like on the wall balls and I'd feel like I can pick up the ball again and I'd pick it up and like three or four reps in, I felt like I already needed to set it down. I did like my wall balls into like 10 sets of 10, just like, just completely redlined. Every time I like went to grab the ball, my legs were just like shaking. I mean, if anybody's worked out without like breakfast or food and, it was just, I don't know really how to explain that feeling if you haven't experienced it before, but there was just zero in the tank. I heard three other athletes say that before I stopped interviewing athletes for the weekend. It was Patrick Vellner and Lazar who both said that their legs felt like freaking concrete. They couldn't do the wall balls the way that they wanted to. So there's nothing unique there, but this is the second time in a series of five minutes on this interview where Justin Medeiros is saying that he's incapable of doing things that he's used to. And right there, he brings up nutrition. This right here is a perfect example of why someone like Matt Fraser throws down gallons of Gatorade powder before a workout. Because if you have that sugar in there, your muscles can start using that sugar and if you fry it all out and it's gone from maybe a bike ride that you've done earlier first thing you do when you finish up that bike ride is not jump into a stupid freaking ice bath like all these people are doing it's you throw down some gatorade sludge you get a one cup freaking powder of gatorade sludge throw it into a blender bottle and you stir that thing up and you heat it with a freaking spoon so that you don't crap out on the wall balls and also you don't spend the off season eating christmas cookies and thanksgiving dinners i remember finding them like, oh shoot mckay i never got my chip timer i got it i had an object it's on your ankle. And I was like, I remember sitting there and I was like, when did that get put on? I did not remember it at all. And in that time, like the adrenaline starts to pump. I started to feel better. I'm like, you know what? Like maybe I can freaking crush this workout. And then that happened and I'm like, uh, maybe I'm not still in like the most recovered. 
like best headspace. Hell, I'll leave it in here twice because I think it's the most obvious thing in this entire interview. You're not just gonna sneak an ankle bracelet onto somebody. Tell that to anybody in prison. It's all like, oh my God, now I'm on house arrest. Where did this ankle bracelet come from? They know when it got there. They know why it's there. They under they remember when it was put on their ankle. The sheer fact that he don't remember that thing getting put on there means that he probably had a concussion. I'm saying probably. I'm not saying definitely. But if you ask me, the entire weekend could just be chalked up to that right there. And I don't know why he's not talking about it. He's talking about these other injuries that he's got. He's talking about his headspace leading up with the CrossFit games. I'm currently speculating that the dude's out of shape and his diet sucks. And all he had to do is say, yeah, I got a concussion on that bike ride. But he's not saying it. It's weird. All the way up to that lift workout, I felt like I gave it my everything. You started thinking about that second lift already, you know? Uh, full attention wasn't on that lift. With two lifts, it's like, well, I know there's a lot more in the tank now, but if I miss my next lift, I'm getting cut. Was pretty frustrated with that because that was like the first time where I felt like the events that transpired before in the weekend affected my performance. <sighs> What is there to say about that? Just watch the documentary maybe a month ago where all he's doing is he's looking left and he's looking right and he's seeing that Ricky Gerard puts a bar down so he overtakes him because he's got that freaking fight. Justin Medeiros this year doesn't have the fight in him. Maybe he got taken out of him because of this so-called maybe possible concussion that I'm speculating about. It might be worth me standing my ground at this point talking about how I think the training partner that you have might have something to do with your performance at this level. Ellie Turner right now is a middle of the pack games level head. Athlete. There's nothing wrong with that, but right now she's never proven to go anything higher than a teens. What did you say? She's never been in the teens. She's been in the 20s. She's gotten there three years in a row, but this is who Justin Medeiros is comparing himself to. And the reason that this isn't something that I'm sold on is because I think it was Froning who said that Dan Bailey, who he brought in to be a training partner of his, they're buddies. But the thing about that is that Froning would do just enough to beat Bailey every single day on every single workout because he could do that. And the thing about just barely beating that person every single day is that you're never really putting yourself into the crapper. You're never fully dumping everything out to where you really need to recover after that. And the thing about that is that you can keep on doing that. You keep on doing that. You keep on doing that. And Froning did that forever to the point where recently he said on a podcast with Sevon that when he would work out with Haley Adams, he goes, I don't want to hurt anymore. I really don't want to hurt. But really, maybe he never really hurt that bad ever. Did it ever really look like he was hurting that bad ever? But when it comes to Dan Bailey, that dude tries to beat him on every single workout. He's overtraining. He's like, I'm going to do whatever I can on every workout to try to beat Rich. And then you know what happens? Dan Bailey doesn't become a competitive athlete anymore. Rich continues on forever, just not hurting. Just doing what he needs to as he needs to do it, and they call that being aerobic in your training. Do that anaerobic, terrible, lactic threshold dump on every single workout, like Dan Bailey, and you're gone. So there's a reason that I'm not entirely sold on the fact that his training partner has been bringing him down, because there's the potential that it would also be helping you. So that's something that I wanted to throw into this video as well. And I think if I did win this year, and continued on to this next 2024 season, I think the things that I was dealing with mentally would have got to me real bad. There's a couple of ways you can go with that statement right there. Number one is that it's the incredible story arc for next year where he wins that time and the next year he wins that time. It's the froning on the rope. It's the Fraser losing to Ben Smith, realizing that his diet was garbage. Maybe I'm worried about this. Maybe his diet is garbage. Justin doesn't really say very much in this. He doesn't say what this injury is that he keeps talking about. He doesn't say that he maybe had a concussion. He doesn't say what went wrong in his training. He doesn't say where he was mentally and physically at certain points. He just says that there was something mentally up with him leading up to the season. Maybe it was all the pressure, but at some point it would be really nice for him to like put his freaking sword in the ground or stake in the ground, whatever sort of an object in the ground and say, this is my rope. This is my Ben Smith fail. This is why I don't need a freaking dumpster trucks like I did with Matt Fraser when he was trying to beat him and didn't take it seriously in 2015 or so. But right now we don't have very much. We have some ambiguous stuff that we can speculate about, but let's get our Ramwad plug in. Priority one is getting healthy. And for me, that means just doing my go wads, doing my sauna cold plunge, getting my PT work done and making sure when the season rolls around, I'm firing on all cylinders. I have this thing in my head and this is a tangent, but he says sauna cold plunge, he says physical therapy, he says all this stuff. It doesn't matter 
But how about just sleeping a bunch and chilling out with your freaking chick? Maybe go on a long walk on the beach to help out your mental state. There are these tears in my head, things that are actually really gonna help. And I actually talk about this in relation to performance enhancing drugs. The things that I've seen with testosterone is that on a scale from one to 10, the testosterone helps at like a level of a six. I only say that because of the things that I have heard from people who've taken things like Trenbolone, which help at a level of a nine or a 10. HGH, which helps at a level of a six, seven, eight, or nine. I don't know, it depends on the person that you talk to. But down here at the bottom are the creatines. Creatine's like a two out of 10. Caffeine is like a three out of 10. Every single time you take caffeine, you feel it working. It gets you going. Beta alanine, it's like a one out of 10. Sauna, cold plunge, all this stuff that he brings up right here, it's like a 0.5 out of 10. He brings these things up and he's trying to get better, but he's reaching for things that aren't going to really help him in my opinion. And on this spectrum of things, I think that sleep is above caffeine. I think that that's maybe a level of a four. And I think that your diet and nutrition are also like a four. And if you haven't noticed, I don't think that anything helps quite as much as testosterone helps. Because I can basically throw all that crap out the window, not care about it, and I'm still getting better at everything, and I just sit here and edit all day. That's the plan of right now to get as healthy as I possibly can, but I think- What are you unhealthy with? This is the 10th time you brought up the fact that you've been unhealthy and not good leading in the season. What is it, Justin? Tell us, tell us what it is. But I've had a lot of people say how much they enjoy doing the channel. And I think it's because that like me and Ellie love doing it. You know, I think it's something that's been super fun for us. It's you get to kind of show who we are kind of behind the scenes and don't have to focus too much on CrossFit and I think no you don't have to focus on CrossFit but this is the second time I think it's maybe the first bit that I put up where it's like you are a CrossFitter people love you for the CrossFit that you do don't get away from CrossFit this is your home that's your home are you too good for your home answer me you know to see in the head be Gilmore it's like suck my what no I think we had some fun things on the way we're gonna spend a couple of months I think in Australia and we're thinking about maybe like me and Ellie trying to vlog it so maybe we'll get a camera and try vlogging. Every champion has their own route. Every single one has their own way. I hope that this is Justin Medeiros' way. I, I really hope, because I really like Justin Medeiros, but dude, dude. Has anyone told you? You saw Fraser, you know what he did. And I guess we saw how it worked for a couple of his athletes in the past season. He locked himself in a freaking basement because he didn't want to be taken away from his potential championships. He understood that the more of those things that he won in a row, the better his life would be in the future. If you live to be freaking 80 years old and you take eight years and dedicate it to the sport, Justin, and maybe you had won eight years in a row, you're the greatest CrossFitter of all time. And you can basically retire with a supplement company and a training plan. Plan. That's not what you want. I get it. But you're writing your own story right now. And I just hope that you know you better than I can speculate that I think I know you. I hope for the best for you in the next season. And if you end up watching this, I hope that there's something that you can stick in the ground and give to everybody for next year when you, when you potentially have some sort of an epic comeback. But until you stop the ambiguity, think that it's going to be a vlog and lifestyle. And you know what? I got nothing wrong with that either. Andrew Hiller, out. Do it! Just do it! Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Just do it! Some people dream of success while you're gonna wake up and work hard at it. Nothing is impossible! No! What are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can!